This is video one of a three part series about volume profiles. So for the very, very basics of volume profiles, the best way to get started is to go up to the indicators and strategies menu and click, then select volume profiles. And you have four volume profiles to choose from. This first video is about fixed range volume profiles. The next two videos will it be about session volume profiles, visible range, and the public library. But let's select the fixed range volume profile and get started. You just have to click once to get this tool selected, then exit the menu, and you're going to want to click a starting point and then an ending point and the data will instantly appear. The tool will go to work for you as fast as you just saw there. Now, the fixed range volume profile is technically a drawing tool, so you can also find it in your drawing tools menus here on the left side, specifically the prediction and measurement tools. Click this to open it, go down to the bottom, and there's fixed range volume profile. This star icon will favorite it for you so you never lose it. But let's go ahead and click. Click a starting point. Click an ending point, And there's our fixed range volume profile. So this video is going to dive into the basics of the fixed range volume profile and how you can use it. The first thing we're going to do is fixed range volume profile in this video the first thing we are going to do is talk about the basics of the tool and its settings the next thing we are going to do is talk about the research process and then lastly we're going to talk about how you can use alerts with the fixed range volume profile tool so we're going to talk about these three things in this video. Let's get started. We'll keep this note down here so you can follow along in real time. The basics of the fixed range volume profile tool work like this. Now, you're going to want to click a starting point and an ending point as we've shown, and then you will instantly see the tool presented here. Now there is a very key difference that you must understand about volume profiles. They show you how much trading volume occurred at a specific price level over a specific period of time. We'll say that again. Volume profiles show you how much trading volume occurred at a specific price level over a specific period of time. So in this example, the tool that we have just shown you on the screen is showing us that from this day, March 10th, so we'll just circle March 10th here, to this day, September 14th, we can see how much trading volume occurred at each specific price. So whether price briefly hit $345 a share, right here, we can see how much volume occurred, or whether it traded at $199 a share, we can see how much volume occurred. You could just draw a straight line across to see. And this blue and yellow bar here, this is telling us how much volume occurred on at that price level. Now to really hammer this point home, what we're going to do is add on the chart the traditional volume indicator. So we're going to click to add volume. Volume is different then a fixed range volume profile because volume is telling you how much price occurred on a specific day. So as you can see, on April 21st, you can see how much volume was traded here. Or on June 25th, you can see how much volume was traded. And you can zoom in to really get a sense of how that relates to other days but it's not telling you how much volume traded at each specific price. So there's a huge difference in these two tools. How much volume was traded on a day versus how much volume was traded at a specific price over a period of time. Very, very different ways to visualize price. And you're going to want to use both of them going forward because 
you'll now have two ways to gain perspective on the market to see where traders and investors are buying or selling at. What price level is attracting the most volume? And if you get more volume, for example, it looks like the most trading activity has occurred in this $160 range. The most trading volume will lead to possibly better execution, tighter spreads, and you'll be able to kind of get a better feel of where other buyers and sellers are most comfortable transacting at. Super important. Now, let's keep, continue about the basics of the fixed range volume profile tool. We'll, we are still here on point one, so we're just going to dive in a little more into the basics of this tool. Now that you have a better feel for what this tool means, we're going to zoom in. We're going to create this next one at this earnings report here, go into the most recent day here. Now what we're going to do is open up the settings to create a fixed range volume profile that is perfect for our long-term goals, our trading process. So when you open up the settings menu, you can customize this tool to your exact needs, wants, long-term goals. So you can do the research that's necessary. So the settings menu looks like this. And as we showed, all you have to do is right click and there's a settings wheel here at the bottom. Click that. Sorry, that's a good example. Make sure your tool is selected. Super important. If you right click away from the tool, you will open up your chart settings, which we have videos about this on our profile. It's where you can totally customize your chart to your needs. But for this video, we want to open up the tool settings. This is the fixed range volume profile tool. We want to right click and hit settings. So here's our fixed range volume profile settings menu, which we can put anywhere on the chart. We're going to move it over here so you can watch this change in real time as we make adjustments. First of all, you have your inputs. So your inputs is how the fixed range volume profile is displayed. You could do number of rows or ticks per row. Now the reason why this is different is because number of rows is sort of going to display the information not so much by tick or by price but sort of by these bars. So you can see row size 24 but if we were to change this to 100 you can now see it gets a little more detailed and granular. So what you're doing is ultimately you're deciding whether you want to bulk it and show it more as a as an aggregated display. So the default is 24, so 24 rows. Or ticks per row, which as you can see shows it a little more granular. You can get a sense of each little data point here, and it's being displayed by each price tick. Let's stick to number of rows though, because this is an easier way to visualize price information and it just smooths it out and aggregates it a little more. There's obviously no perfect price ever in markets. There's so many buyers and sellers. It just pays to sometimes aggregate it a little more because of the randomness. Now you can get a better feel for these big areas that matter. Now next up is your volume. So the volume is can be displayed in two different ways, up down volume or total volume. So this is one of the most commonly asked questions about volume profiles. What do the color differences mean? The color differences refer to up volume versus down volume or total volume. So total volume implies, please just show me the total volume. I don't care if it was a volume on a price that closed lower than the last trade or higher than the last trade just show me total volume then there's up and down volume and this will break down the total volume by the trades that were recorded on an up move versus a down move and if you go to your style you'll actually see these two color codes here that say up volume and down volume so you can click this button here and change the color codes for this up volume or down volume. For example, if you do click this purple, 
Well, now your up volume here is going to change to purple. If you ch if you click this red, now it will change to red, and you'll want to do it in both areas: value area up, purple; value area down, red. And we'll explain this whole menu uh, in a very short period of time. Let us go back to normal and input. So that is an important aspect: up volume and down volume or total. It's completely up to you. Some people prefer prefer to select total because they just want to see the total volume. They're not interested in the exact details of whether it was an uptick or a downtick. Just show us the total and we'll make our decision from there. For the sake of this video, we will focus on up volume, down volume. So now it splits the total. See, here's the total. It now splits it into upticks and downticks or a trade where price was higher than the last trade or a trade where price was lower than the last trade value area volume now if you look closely you'll see that on this fixed range volume profile some parts of the volume profile are easier to see than others this is somewhat faded see how this is faded here and faded here but it's very easy to see here this is your value area so what is the value area the value area is defined by you and showing what area you want to see that matters so as an example value area volume 20 this is going to show you 20 percent of all volume in this fixed range volume profile if you go to 80 this is going to show you 80 percent of all volume in this volume profile watch what happens if we go to 100 now everything is shown so why why does this matter to you it's because maybe you believe that only a specific area matters. You don't, you know, you don't want to see these fringe volumes. This is not enough volume to catch your attention. You want to make sure you understand that this volume is outside of an area that's just not significant. It was too little volume. So commonly it's set to 70. So you can see 70 percent of all of the most important or the areas that attracted the most trading volume and then these outside areas are not shown they're not shown as intensely so it depends what you're looking for is this the main area is this where most of the volume happened or do you want to see everything and change it to 100 so it all looks crystal clear for the sake of this video we're going to do 90 so we just want to see as much volume as possible, but we do not want to see the ultra fringe cases that didn't attract much volume at all. So those will then not be shown as intensely here. They won't be colored in as much. Next up, we're going to click style and walk through all of the aspects in style that you can do. So obviously you can uncheck this box and the volume profile disappears. You may want to do this if, for example, you are just you want to hide the tool for a brief moment. The show values, it'll show you the values of the volume profile. Just check this box. The width or percentage of the box is a tool that can be used essentially to control how far you want each volume profile to extend across the area you selected. So did you see what we did there? We changed this to 90, and now the point with the most volume extended almost entirely across the chart. If we go to 100, it essentially reaches the end of the chart. So this is a design aspect. This is, this is a tool that you can use to create a more beautiful fixed range volume profile that fits your needs. If we go to 10, you can see how this shrinks down. This is specifically for your own visual preferences there's no right or wrong way to do this this is for your look and feel for us we like to keep it at 30 it's a good way to visualize price and it is a perf takes up a perfect amount of space in the larger box placement left or right it's just as it sounds do you want it to be on the right side here or do you want it to be on the left side totally up to you. For now, we'll keep it to the default, which is the left side.
Now let's talk about the up volume and down volume. Value area up, value area down. Remember, you have an option to show volume either all as one color, just show me all volume at a price level, or to do up and down volume, the choice is yours. If we go to style now, we can actually change the color of these options to make the data easier to study and research. So up volume, for the case of this video, let's turn it to green because green is going to remind us that it was up. This is a, you know, this is a move that's going up. There was a volume involved that included trades that were higher than the last. So we want up volume included. And we're going to make it this green color. Now keep in mind there are two types of volume to color on this chart. There is up volume outside of the value area. So this is going to be these sort of uh, fringe cases. And if you remember, our value area is set to 90. We could do 20 or 10. So what we're doing in this example, but let's go to 90. What we're doing in this example is con controlling the look and feel of the up volume outside the value area and the up volume in the value area. So up volume outside, up volume in the value area. The value, a value area is the most important part of this chart because it's the area that attracted the most volume that we want to see. So we've changed it to green and you can watch these, watch this color change compared to the green here. We'll change this to blue actually. So now you see value area up. This is the area that we care about. Change to blue, this is green, it's, we don't care as much. But for simplicity, we want all value areas or up volumes to be the same color. So let's go to green. Let's change them both to green. There you have it. Let's also change this opacity. You can see now it's even harder to see. And now the value area down, we're going to change to red. So let's change that to red. Down volume, red. Why did we do this? Because we know green is sort of a positive upward trending color. Red is sort of a negative downward trending color. So now we can get a better sense of, okay, was, it, was price trending down in that price range or up? It's just easier to see. But remember, the standard colors are actually blue and yellow. This is all up to you on how you want to customize the chart. Next up is point of control point of control is probably the most important aspect of the volume profile. It's this red line that jets across the chart. And point of control tells you the price level that had the most volume. So this red line that shoots across is telling us that 209.80 or 210-ish has had the most volume. How interesting is that? Now you know about $210 per share on this chart attracts the most volume. Tons of buyers are buying, tons of sellers are selling. Something is clearly happening here. There's liquidity, there's volume, there is probably very little slippage. Spreads get tighter. Now you know. And it's so easy that it just took a start clicking the starting point here, ending point here, and we can see our point of control. Now we can adjust the point of control to our needs. POC stands for point of control. We could also hide it. See how it disappeared? Click it, it's there. We can change the color up to us or how the line looks, dotted or dashed. For the sake of this video, we're gonna change it to white because we don't want the red color to imply that it's some sort of negative aspect. We're just gonna go simply a white color straight across it's you know it's natural it's easy to see because we're doing we have our charts on dark mode so we're just going to use this white line here now some more things to understand are the developing poc and the developing va you see these lines appear watch them disappear as we uncheck the box developing poc is a developing point of control what the heck is developing point of control and how is it different than point of control? Developing point of control is the point of control 
but it's showing you how the point of control changed over time with each new piece of information. So if we could somehow block off this whole half of the chart, we would see that back in July, the point of control is actually at 217. Look how long it was, it was at 217. And it was still at 217, still at 217, still at 217. And only just recently, on September 8th, in the last few days of trading, did the point of control drop to its new level of about 209, 210. But prior to September 8th, the point of control the whole time was actually at 217. So if you have a developing POC and a POC here, you can now get a sense of the levels that were really important before the current point of control. This is valuable information because now you know that actually only just recently did the point of control suddenly snap back to 210. Also, keep in mind, the developing point of control is dropping, not rising, which may mean there's more people selling at these levels or getting ready maybe to lower their exposure or something of that sort than are buying. Remember, by the way, this video is just an example. We are showing GameStop, GME. This is one of the most epic short squeezes to happen in market history. You probably have now read about it. You can see this chart. It went from $4 to almost 200 At one point, it was 470 So this is a very epic moment in market history. It may not even be over yet, but we're just using this video as an example. We are not saying to buy or sell ever. We're just showing you how you can use fixed range volume profile to get started and all of the settings that are available to you so you can create a fixed range volume profile that is perfect for your needs. Okay, let's open up the settings menu again. And here is our developing value area. So we've talked about the point of control. This is the price where the most volume has traded right here developing point of control. This shows point of control developing over time as new trading activity comes in. So now that you know what the developing point of control is, the developing VA is your developing value area. So if you remember in our value area, we wanted to see a you know the most important points or the most important price levels where most of the trading volume occurred, so we selected 90. We don't want to see 100%. We don't want to see every little aspect of trading, but we want to see the majority of it while it's subtracting the little bits. And when we have developing VA, not subtracting, sorry, but not showing it as strong of a color, it doesn't matter as much to us. And when we have developing VA, we can now watch those levels change in real time. What's cool about this is you can see that the price has been squeezing. It's been getting tighter and tighter. It's sort of developing downward pressure, whereas here it's sort of widening out a little, now potentially starting to tighten up a little bit more. And this is the developing value area. So you're seeing the values, you know, the trading volume that you believe is important, you know, change over time as new price information comes in. These levels are getting less and less important, less and less important until the current value area was created, which is here. You can see right here it fades. These bars are not as strongly colored. And you can see even here, we draw a line across, it's not as strongly colored. So you can use the value areas to get a sense of trend. What, where is price and volume getting stronger or weaker relative to what you want to see? We're going to uncheck this. Your coordinates, well, guess what? You could customize your coordinates start to finish. So maybe we had our coordinates wrong when we selected the chart using this tool. So what we could do instead is open settings and do 230 and then do 300. 300, there was no price information at three at 300 in this instance, so do 230. 299 and now we've got our coordinates set we're going to double click and what we're going to do next is go to visibility and this is where you can see the visibility 
depending on your time frame. So if you want to see this on a daily chart, keep this box checks, checked. If you don't want to see it on an hourly chart, well, watch this. We go to one hour, it's gone. It's because we turned it off in visibility. Let's go back to daily, and here it is. So it will show up on a daily chart, but not on an hourly chart. So that is the settings and the basics of the fixed range volume profile. This is video number one. We will show you a few more examples of how to use this tool. And then we will wrap up and hopefully show you videos two and three right after this. So please stay tuned if you've managed to stick around for this huge 25 minute tutorial. So we've talked about the basics of the fixed range volume profile tool and its settings. We've gone through that. You now understand its settings. Well, let's talk about now the research process. How can you actually research ideas with this tool? We're going to show you one or two quick examples or how you could even possibly trade with it. The first thing you want to do is find a price level that matters. Maybe something really big happened on a specific day or maybe something caught your attention and it's just sort of changed the dynamics of the chart and you want to research that further. You're looking for an entry to short or to buy or just to study for your own, you know, your own curiosity. Well, in this case, this is one of the largest short squeezes in history and one of the biggest days in that short squeeze was this day right here. January 13th, sort of the start of the squeeze. So to start our research process, we'll click fixed range volume profile. We'll click our starting point. We will then click our ending point. And just like that, we can now get a volume profile showing us the levels that matter most, as well as getting this feel for this $50 level that got the most volume because this white line is our point of control. So this area means that from the prices of $60 to $30 attracted the most trading volume. And by the way, always make sure that when you are doing these studies, you are aware of the difference between log charts and non-log charts, because log charts measure the scale by percentage, the change, the percentage change from one price to the next, whereas these non-log charts are just each unit, you know, each $1. It's fixed no matter how high or how low you go. So now that we've done that study, we're now going to say, well, in, this doesn't help us too much because price is already at $200, but we're being told the most volume happened at around 50. So, well, we could place a buy order at 50 and maybe one day it'll come back. We want to get involved when there's a ton of volume. But is price suddenly going to just drop from here to 50, a 75% drop? Maybe, maybe not. But that is quite rare. These types of drops don't happen often. And maybe we want to establish a position sooner rather than later. So what we would do in this research process is go a little shorter on our time frame. We'd zoom in a little. So we're going to now go to a four-hour chart. And we are indeed going to zoom in on this chart. And instead of going back from when the squeeze started, we're actually going to go back to the first earnings report after the squeeze, go through this earnings report and the most recent earnings report and see what the data tells us. So let's select our tool. Looks like this was March 24th. Remember, earnings reports are really important days because it's when new information becomes available about a company. You're told about its revenue, its earnings, the management team talks about it. It is the foundation of a, it's what drives a company. You know, how much money are they making? What does their future outlook look like? So now that we've done that, we actually see a new level. It's pretty interesting, $160 per share. And if we want to zoom in again to get even more information, well, we could go to a 30-minute chart, select this level here to this level here, because this, look at this volume come in, this spike. And now we see that 205 is a significant level. And to wrap up this video, what we can then do, this is the last point of our video, is using alerts alongside your volume profile, is we can actually draw a horizontal line right across the chart like this. Right click, 
add alert on horizontal line and then create an alert and we'll get notified the second price crosses this line gme alert fixed range volume profile video click create and look at this alert icon we'll, we will now get alerted the second price hits this line and that is how you can then use alerts alongside your volume profiles remember this is video one we have many more coming we're going to go even deeper into volume profiles with alerts and we are also going to explain the advantages of session volume session volume hd visible range and using the public library thank you for watching